I will probably have a video on how I am pirating the YouTube videos and putting them on here on, at a later date. Let's see here. We could go into books. Important book to have. I'm a Christian. New Te oh, not New Testament, it's a full Bible right here. The Atlas. An up-to-date version. This is 2010. Anything newer than probably 2000 would be just as good. Name does not get it. Does not change all that much. I also have these books right here. The Constitution, Declaration of Independence, the Articles of Confederation. Good thing to have, not mandatory. But if you're going to be out in the woods or if you're going to be in some kind of survival situation, edible wild plants and useful herbs, practical outdoor survival. This one I think I picked up at L.L. Bean. The Forager's Harvest. This is a really good one. It has a lot of very good pictures and it is just plum full of plants. <laughs> and it gives you, you know, areas where you can find them. You know, probably half of them we wouldn't be able to find up here anyways, but shelters, shacks, and shanties. This is another nice little book, which I'm very creative and I'm pretty good at building things. Probably not a necessity, but they do give a lot of good ideas in here anyways. Makes for a fun read. So those are what we would take for books at this point. Coming to other things, ovens, cooking. We have a Dutch oven. You can cook. We've already been using our Dutch oven. I love it. We've cooked bread. We've cooked chicken. We've cooked steaks, soups, whatever. We've cooked a lot of stuff in this. We used this last year when we were spending a lot of time up at our property. Like it a lot. Another awesome innovation is a rocket stove. Many people probably have not heard about the rocket stove. Rocket stoves were designed not not all that long ago for like a lot of these third world countries where wood is scarce, you know, wood is wood is a um, important resource, but you know, people don't have that much of it. And what they, I forgot the guy's name, but some guy came up with a way of basically utilizing wood, um, no, not utilizing wood, but utilizing all the energy that comes out of wood. And it's a very efficient stove that you can, you know, we, we've used a the rocket stove very similar to this. This is a more compact version than what we've used up at the property, but it would it works the same way. And you just stick small timbers up here, air flows underneath here, and you've got this jet of just flame that comes up here. And you just set your pan, pot. The one problem with these things is it does turn the bottom side of your pots and frying pans, whatnot, it you know, it turns them black. But the thing is very efficient. It's better than using a Coleman stove minus the, the cleanup afterwards. It's a lot easier to find little tiny twigs that are burnable than it is to be out splitting logs and create some kind of fire and try to cook over that. The other stove that I do have is this little treasure found this on eBay. I've seen people selling this thing for like $200. It's ridiculous. You can get them on eBay for like $80, including shipping. Um, oh, well, no, maybe it was like $100 including shipping, but still, I think I think I paid just about $100 or $98 for this thing. And I have not fired it up, so I cannot give you, uh, there's no critique as, when, as far as that's concerned. But everything, it has your, your, your pokers, it's got a little small hoe type thing to move the ashes around in. It has a chimney. It's got legs. It has your thermostat here. Not your thermostat, but uh, well, yeah, I guess your, your air control. It's actually got a whole front and back. And I have read very good things about this. Although I have not fired it on myself because I just did not want to have to keep this thing in storage and have creosote seeping out of it, you know, for every vibration that happens. But 
Again, this thing could go in this, the teepee tent, which is meant for the wood stove. You can cook on it, you can wrap your clothes on it, dry your socks, dry your gloves, whatever you want. We do have another stove, which is right there. Sorry about the mess, we're getting ready to move. But this is, this is one we picked up at Cabela's, and that thing pumps out heat. We're really impressed with that. We also have the chimney oven that goes with it, but that, that is at the camp also. We just took this thing home so we could use up a little bit of wood we had. Um, this is another little quasi rocket stove. It's not really a rocket stove. It's not really a gas wood gasifier either. But this this is a this is a hobo stove pretty much. And it could heat up what was it, a cup of water I think in ten minutes in about ten degree weather. And it was windy. So it, it was it was pretty impressive. And it just came from a it was a Harmony Bay coffee can, a Progresso soup can and a tuna fish can. It all kind of fits together. It took me a couple hours to build it probably. Very happy, very lightweight, and if it breaks you're like, oh well, I'll just find me a garbage can and make me a new stove. Let's see, we also have, depending on how long term, a grinder, a, uh, a mill. And I don't know if this is something I'd absolutely take with me. But there's a lot of stuff you can grind up for medicinal purposes, to put in kids' food that, you know, different types of weeds that are nutritious and kids aren't going to touch. Our kids are extremely picky. You know, you grind things up. Acorns, you can grind acorns up. You roast them, grind them up, make flour, and you can make a little flat, uh, flapjacks out of them or whatever. Does not sound very delicious to me. And leaves bit, but who knows? And you might come across some dried beans, and instead of cooking beans, you, you know, I'm not one that really likes beans, but I don't mind grinding beans up into a flour and putting them into some kind of other concoction. So it is one of those things that we have in our survival slash bug out gear. Food. I have this box of Mountain House dehydrated food. I really don't know how much is in it. But it would certainly go our family a week um, or more, probably more, because we could easily not eat that much. Our kids don't eat that much, and my wife and I don't really eat that much either. I also have some ration D bars, which my wife will stop the video and I'll come back with a ration D bar. All right. These are ration D bars. I believe it was in World War II where they had this concoction of cocoa and oats flour, salt, sugar. It's a, it's a calorie bar. And I was looking online for different types of survival foods and, and this is something that people, it was a sought after recipe of how to make these ration D bars. So I got the, got the recipe and, and proceeded to make some. I think I made a couple alterations to the recipe. Uh, I don't remember. I don't think it was really much of anything substantial. I think I might have used more oats or maybe I made oat flour or something. But anyways, I don't know if my wife can zoom in on it. It's not very spectacular. <laughs> um, I used these little dollar store containers, those little you put applesauce in it for kids to send them off to school with or whatever you do. But that's what I use for a mold. These are another high energy bar. I don't remember what is in these things for the life of me. I don't believe it's chocolate. I believe it is it is a it's a molasses type cake mixture. I do have the recipe someplace. But I've had it, it's I remember it has a lot of Crisco in it. <laughs> so it's, a lot of that hydrogenated fat. Um, it, it, it is a it's a high calorie bar, and I don't have too many of these things. I've probably got like 40 of those guys, but I don't have too many of these things. And they don't taste good. The kids, would, I mean, they don't taste they don't taste bad. The kids would eat them. They wouldn't have any problem with it. I think my my oldest son has tried these, and I know both of our kids love these. Or, we, not the reason why I say both is because one of our kid is 
kids are only one, so. Well, we did use the smaller, the Ration D one, when we've had the flu. We've used that to have, like, you know, an energy boost. and. That's right. Kind of... That's right. We did. We did. Because the kids weren't really holding anything down, and we wanted to get them some some energy and some calories in, so we did give them a Ration D bar, or a couple of them. But they loved it, and now it tastes like candy. So, that is what we would have for, you know, an evacuation type scenario. We gotta put food in, you know, most of the food we we take with us would fit in a box like that. You know, a little bit more, I've got, well, maybe a box and a half if you put all the bars in there. And those things aren't stacked too terribly neatly, it could be a little bit more compact. And the did you get see. the water filter? The water filter, no, that's right, I didn't even go through this stuff. This is gonna be a two part series. You'll probably lose your excitement after the first five minutes and never watch the second one. Water filter. We bought a Katadin water filter. I'm thinking it's good for 3,000 gallons between our large filters or something like that. I can't remember what it is. And I also have a rod and reel with a little bit of tackle collapsible one. I saw it at L.O.B. and it was like 30 bucks. I'm like, hey, that's perfect for a bug out survival bag. I'm not a guy who fishes. I'm not really particularly crazy about fish. But if I had to, I'd eat grubs. So that's what's in there. This is an extra bowstring. And I have an extra bowstring because I have a bow. I have a recurve bow. Relatively inexpensive. I think I paid a buck fifty or hundred and seventy something like that for this. It's fifty pounds. I'm pretty sure it's a fifty pound bow. Uh, I've been out target practicing with it. I'm pretty pretty decent. I'd be able to hit a deer without a problem. I bought some arrows. These are not hunting tips. These are just target practicing tips. I do not have hunting tips yet. But if I was going to take to the woods, a bow, extra set of string is something I would want with me. And it does collapse down too. You can take these arms off and pack them down a little bit more. You can always make yourself some arrows. They might not be very good arrows. You might have to practice a little bit with your custom made arrows. But I would want a bow with me. I also have a 22, Remington 597 22. I've done a lot of research on 22s because this was the first rifle I bought when I started buying my firearms about three years ago. And 22 is, you can take down a person, you can take down a deer, you can take down most anything. So, you know, if you're in a survival situation where you need to hunt, 22. If you're in a place where you need to defend yourself, you can take down people with 22s. It's an overall really cheap weapon. Ammo is extremely cheap. So and they're accurate. This thing is dead on. I've got a pretty good power scope here. I've put probably a thousand rounds from now. 800 rounds for it anyways. I'm thinking it's probably closer to a thousand rounds. And I love this gun. There is another stock that I'd like to get for it that basically just takes the takes a bear it makes a bull pop rifle so the thing shrinks down to about that length right there and I'd eventually like to get one of those we'll see how things go I also have a 30 round clip for it but that's kind of it's cumbersome because the thing sticks out and makes it look really dumb but it is a lot of fun going through 30 rounds really quickly I also have a Beretta 22 pistol, which I would also keep on me. I love this gun. It's accurate. Feels good. Got a couple clips. You know, I picked it up for 270, I think I paid for it. And it's 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 my favorite handgun. I have another 45, which is accurate. I like shooting, but this is I, I love playing with this one. And my wife does too, don't you? <laughs> oh, give away my secret. 